Peace, peace. Peace to the family. This is Soul Constance TV. This is King Norman, and we are back with another lecture. Today we're going to talk about contradictions of the Bible, and this is going to be a part one. And we'll possibly come back with a part two and maybe a part three. Uh, as you can see, I have some literature with me, as always. Deceptions and Myths of the Bible by Lloyd M. Graham. I also have with me Stolen Legacy by George G. M. James, where your philosophy was the offspring of the Egyptian mystery system or the comedic mystery system. George G. M. Graham. Melanin, A Key to Freedom by Richard King. A basic study of ancient African history. Melanin, a key to freedom. It reveals an early African definitions of human melanin system as a whole body black melanin system that serves as the eye of the soul to produce inner vision, true spiritual consciousness, creative genius, beatific vision to become godlike and to have conversation with the ancestors. Ashe. I have Black Man of Denial and His Family by Dr. Joseph Ben Joachim, who was a master teacher and an historian, who is now an ancestor who has transitioned. May he rest in power. He's passed over. He's now an ancestor. This is one of his many works. Many works. I also have the Isis Papers. The Isis Papers, The Keys to the Colors by Dr. Francis Cress Wilson who was a master teacher, mother queen goddess, who has transitioned as well. She's now an ancestor. May she rest in power. Ashe. Well, let's get into it. You know, we understand that we live in a patriarchy, meaning that the only one men in control or men running the show which is basically a male chauvinistic cult and very biased. So basically they want the women to sit back, basically be submissive, and let the man control them. According to the Bible, there shouldn't even be any evangelists or female ministers, which is probably one of the reasons why they say that they don't teach out the Old Testament anymore. So in order to support my claim of what the Bible is saying, now, King Norman, the Bible is saying, let's go into the verses. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse 34. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 11 to 14. Let the woman learn in silence with all suggestions. But I suffer not allowing a woman to teach, nor to assert or exercise authority over the man, but to be in silence. So they basically made it known that they don't want the woman in charge of nothing. They want her sitting back, laying back in the cut, and just saying yes, 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 yes. That's very biased. A lot of people don't understand that in this Bible, it has racism, it has... So many different contradictions, fallibility, it's erosy. Um, a lot of people say that the Bible is an historical book, but we know that it is a plagiarized book. It also supports slavery, and a lot of people only have read a few of the laws, but don't understand many of the laws in Deuteronomy and Leviticus. So. Who is the father of Joseph? Because according to the Bible, we've been taught that Jacob is the father of Joseph. So in Matthew 1.16, it, it reads, And Jacob begat Joseph, the husband of Mary, whom was born Jesus, who was called the Christ. But in Luke 3.23, it states, And Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being as supposed the son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli. So in Matthew 1, 16, 
Jacob is the supposed father of Joseph. But in Luke 3.23, Heli is the supposed father of Joseph. So which one is it? Is it Jacob or Heli? We also have to understand the false teachings of the Apostle Paul. You have to understand that it was his gospel. So a lot of people who are Baptist or apostolic or in Christianity go under the Pauline message, being taught that they are born a sinner and that they are not worthy. But in second, but in Second Corinthians, chapter twelve, verse sixteen, it states, "Be it so, I did not burden you. Nevertheless, being crafty or sneaky, I caught you with guile. That means that I fooled you." I tricked you. I deceived you with trickery. It is all an allegory. A lot of people believe that you have to go to a church to find God or that God exists within the church. A lot of people have been taught that you have to go to a mosque to find Allah and that Allah or that God exists within the mosque. But in reality, the temple is the body of Christ, and we are all the Christ. In that nature is your church, therefore you are in fellowship 24-7. So if the temple is the body of Christ, of the Christ, which is a title, not a name, and is a level of consciousness, then why do you go to church every Sunday? So here's a verse that your pastor is not taught to ever teach, ever. Acts 7, verse 48. How be it? The Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands. I will say it again. How be it, the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands. So with that being said, why are you going to church every Sunday, giving your energy and time and if He created all this, why does He need your money, tithes, and offering. I don't understand. But um, a lot of people have to understand the segment in Bible theology. It is when a people link Bible verses to contribute a false doctrination or attribution. And in the Gutenberg Bible, it was a thousand year period of a people who wrote themselves into history in correcting the timeline. So we understand that there's a lot of plagiarism. But this is Soul Conscious TV, this is King Armor, and this is the part one to the sections of the Bible. Like and subscribe.